Hello and welcome to Channel 11, which is managed by me, Sadie Alexa Knight, an INFJ and proud New Hampshire native and resident. So here is today's itinerary. See timestamps in description. New Hampshire, named after Hampshire, England, was founded in 1622 by Captain John Mason and Ferdinando Gorges. But it wasn't until 1623 the first settlers arrived in what is now Portsmouth. New Hampshire became the ninth state on June 21, 1788, as part of the original 13 colonies of the USA. New Hampshire is only 9,400 square miles, give or take, in size, with nearly 1.4 million current inhabitants on record, roughly 44,000 of those residing in the capital of Concord. It is one of the six New England states in the northeastern United States where the residents are known as New Hampshireites. Here are some New Hampshire state symbols known as the Granite State, in which granite is known as the State Rock. State motto is Live, Free, or Die. State gem, Smoky Quartz, which is known in the spiritual world as a good luck stone or the grounding stone, as it signifies stability. Helps in alleviating emotional baggage and is said to improve the general well-being of the stone's possessor. State mineral is Beryl. State bird, Purple Finch. State flower, purple lilac, state animal, white-tailed deer, and the state tree is a white birch. New Hampshire is known for many things from zoology and cryptids to sprawling mountain ranges, UFOs, astronauts, skiing, wealth, rural farmland, lakes and forests, a place where the glaciers used to sit, wildlife, impeccable education, low crime, historical landmarks, and even its own haunted history. Here are some cool, generally unknown, facts about the beautiful state of New Hampshire. Aliens, cryptids, and witches. The first publicized alien abduction, the Betty and Barney Hill alien abduction. Betty and Barney Hill, residents of Portsmouth, saw a UFO in Franconia Notch on September 19 to 20th, 1961, on their way back from Niagara Falls in New York. The Hills were abducted by a field by the Interstate 93 overpass on Route 3 in Lincoln, New Hampshire, by a row of twisted, sagging apple trees. They underwent hypnosis and were able to recall alien experiments done on them, and Betty was even able to draw a map of Zeta Reticuli, a wide binary star system located in Reticulum, a constellation in the southern portion of observed space. Betty and Barney are buried at Greenwood Cemetery in Kingston, New Hampshire, which is a seacoast town. The Exeter Incident this publicized UFO sighting incident took place on September 3, 1965. Note the date in relation to the Hill incident. Both took place in September and both occurred in the early 1960s. The UFO I saw personally with two reliable witnesses was also in the fall of 2012 in West Manchester toward Gough Sound, New Hampshire. It could have been September, but I am not 100%. The Exeter incident technically took place in Kensington, New Hampshire, about five miles south of Exeter, in which Exeter is a major town of the seacoast. A UFO was spotted by a teenage boy and verified by two reputable police officers. This incident caused an Air Force investigation and was only one of many reportings of UFOs in the Exeter area. The Coas County Wood Devil When it comes to cryptids, New Hampshire is no stranger. We may not have Bigfoot, but we do have the Wood Devil. The definition of cryptid is an animal claim to but not proven to exist. Reports of this small Bigfoot impersonator date back to the 1800s, but rose in the 1970s. 
These creatures are said to be tall and thin with gray hairs. They are said to be very shy, elusive creatures who hide in the dense forests of Coas County, located in the great north woods of New Hampshire by the Canadian border. They are so quiet that a person often wouldn't see or hear them until they were face to face with one. The wood devil likes to huddle by the bark of trees to camouflage itself, but once spotted, it lets out a shrieking howl, so piercing it causes the human to flee. Sightings of this cryptid are mostly around the Appalachian Trail and by the Vermont and Canadian borders. The forest here is very dense, with many parts so remote that man hasn't settled there, let alone set foot. Sightings have drastically dropped in the recent decades, but a recent sighting within the last couple of years, so sometime between 2019 to 2021, was on the Dummer Pond Trail off Nash Stream Road. A side note for Dummer, New Hampshire, this small rural town is located off Route 16, which is a long stretch of road known for moose sightings and being on prime Native American territory. Witchery, the haunting of Goody Cole and the accusation of Jane Walford. Goody Cole was born Eunice Cole and the only New Hampshire witch ever tried and convicted for witchcraft. She lived on the end of Island Pond Road in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. Island Pond Road is known to be the most haunted road in the state. Objects have been seen moving on this street along with strange lights and apparitions in the fog. After years of torment by her accusers, she died a lonely, miserable death in 1656. It was then the hauntings began. The only physical item that remains to this day in remembrance of Goody Cole is a plaque on a rock on Park Avenue in the seaside town of Hampton. Although she was the only person convicted, Goody was not the only one accused. During the tensions of Massachusetts Puritans taking over government control in southern New Hampshire, several accusations of witchcraft flew around. A Portsmouth resident, Jane Walford, also saw the wrath. Space, Education, Sports, and Recreation First American in Space, Alan Shepard Alan Shepard from Derry, New Hampshire, was born in 1923 and an astronaut who partook in the space missions of Apollo 14 and Mercury Redstone 3. Mr. Shepard was the second person and first American to go to space in 1961 and walked on the moon in 1971. He was also a Navy test pilot in World War II. First civilian in space for NASA's teacher in space project, Krista McAuliffe. Krista, born a Bostonian, was a social studies teacher in the capital, Concord, where she was chosen to be one of the first civilians and the first teacher into space aboard the Challenger. The world watched liftoff as well as her students and her schoolmates. Only one minute and 13 seconds after takeoff, the shuttle broke apart and all aboard perished. She now rests in peace at Blossom Hill Cemetery in Concord. In honor of both Alan Shepard and Krista McAuliffe, the New Hampshire Technical Institute in Concord, where I personally obtained my associate's degree, is home to the McAuliffe Shepard Discovery Center, also known as the Krista McAuliffe Planetarium, which is an air and space education facility. The famous Nansen Ski Jump this ski jump is located in the northern town of Milan, New Hampshire, and nestled in what is known as Nansen Wayside Park, directly off Route 16, which you'll hear a lot about in this video. It was built in 1936 and known as the largest ski tower in the world. It did close in 1988 and now sits dormant. The oldest motorcycle rally in the United States. Laconia Motorcycle Week has been around since 1916 and still draws attention nationwide. Laconia is a tourist town and nestled on Lake Winnipesaukee, 
where Laconia Bike Week takes place at Ware's Beach on the Lone Strip and Boardwalk. Laconia Bike Week takes place in June every year, and Interstate 93 North sucks big ass during this time, so find alternate routes. The New Hampshire Motor Speedway This famous racetrack, which has been hosting NASCAR since 1990, is located in the central New Hampshire town of Loudoun, directly north of Concord, the capital. It is one of the only 29 working NASCAR tracks in the United States and is a one-mile-long oval speedway. New Hampshire Motor Speedway is also known for hosting the longest-running motorcycle race in North America called the Loudoun Classic. Like with Laconia Bike Week mentioned above, this event draws a lot of tourism and traffic, especially along Route 106. Those living in towns by Loudoun are encouraged to take back roads starting at the Concord Loudoun town line or finding alternate routes on Interstate 93 or winding through the Epsom area. Normally, this route takes much longer, but during race week, when NASCAR fans hoard this pocket of the state, it is much shorter. Dartmouth College Dartmouth College is one of the eight Ivy League schools. Better yet, it is known as a private Ivy League research university. It is the ninth oldest known for higher education. Dartmouth College was the inspiration for the Animal House film as it's rich in Greek culture. Some noteworthy alumni include Dr. Seuss, Daniel Webster, Robert Frost, and Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers. Media, famous people, and literature. The home of famous authoress Jody Picoult. Jody Picoult is a famous author who resides in the quaint town of Hanover, nestled in the Dartmouth region of New Hampshire, which is the northern pocket of central northwest New Hampshire. She is best known for My Sister's Keeper, a novel that was placed on the silver screen in the movie of the same name starring Cameron Diaz and Alec Baldwin. Plain Truth, The Storyteller, and The Tenth Circle. She is a graduate of both Princeton and Harvard. The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. Dan Brown is a renowned author who resides in the fancy seacoast town of Rye. He also taught English at the famous ritzy private school, Phillips Exeter Academy in Exeter, one of the schools the Olsen twins toured and contemplated attending. His home is a beautiful, grand stone mansion, and his net worth is roughly $160 million. Dan Brown is one of the most well-known and richest authors currently. Robert Frost, the poet. Robert Frost of Derry, New Hampshire, the same place as astronaut Alan Shepard, is a famous poet. Mr. Frost was born in 1874 and died in the winter of 1963. His farm homestead still stands in Derry and sees few tourists. He attended Dartmouth College and left his mark with his most popular poem, the Road Not Taken, about taking the roads less traveled. Inspired by nature, he died in nature and now rests at Old Bennington Cemetery in nearby Bennington, Vermont. On Golden Pond On Golden Pond is a 1981 film starring Henry and Jane Fonda and Katherine Hepburn and written by Ernest Thompson. It was filmed on Big Squam Lake and Little Squam Lake in Grafton County. This lake is in the town of Holderness in the Upper Lakes region and Lower White Mountains. This is where I live currently. We are known for the Squam Lakes Science Center where you can walk through the woods and see coyotes and wolves in their natural habitat. Bob Montana and the Archie Comics Bob Montana died in the state of New Hampshire in 1975 and was known as the creator of the Archie comics, starring Betty, Veronica, Archie, and Jughead. There is currently a bench starring characters of the famous comics located in Meredith, New Hampshire, which is nearby to my town of Holderness and located in the Lakes region in Belknap County, which is adjacent to Grafton County. 
The well-known TV show Riverdale is based off the Archie comics. Old Farmer's Almanac The Old Farmer's Almanac is a known pamphlet said to accurately predict weather and weather patterns nationwide. Robert B. Thomas was the Almanac's first editor and his formula for his predictions lay safely tucked in a black tin box at the Almanac office in the town of Dublin, New Hampshire, which is in Cheshire County, Adam Sandler birthplace. Adam Sandler, famous actor, was born in the bustling city of Manchester, New Hampshire. Well, as bustling as any New Hampshire city gets, which is not very much so. Manchester is in southern New Hampshire and is the state's largest and most populated city. It is dubbed the Queen City or Manch Vegas by locals. Of course, Adam no longer lives here, but he did attend Central High School, which is in my son Cypress's neighborhood. Mary had a little lamb. This kid's nursery rhyme was written by a Newport lady named Sarah Josepha Hale, an author. North Woods Law on Animal Planet This docuseries on the animal planet films here in New Hampshire as of 2017. Previously, it filmed in the state of Maine. It features the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department and is a good representation of the nature and wildlife abundant in the state. Jumanji this popular blockbuster starring the late Robin Williams was filmed in the southwestern political college town of Keene. This part of the state is less populated than the central and southern regions, features quaint hillsides with windmills and a ton of farmland. Keene is the only thing resembling a city in southwest New Hampshire. The Seacoast Fortresses, Historical Landmarks, and Gravesites Shortest coastline of all seacoast states. There are 30 coastal states, 14 of them being on the eastern seaboard. New Hampshire is a state that takes the trophy for having the shortest coastline. Much of this coastline is on a strip of slim road called Ocean Boulevard. Much of the boulevard displaying sprawling green lawns and stately mansions in which a local real estate organization Tate and Foss, seems to land the accounts of the houses being sold on Ocean Boulevard and other prominent nearby areas. The most popular beach and the only one with a boardwalk is Hampton. Every June, Hampton Beach hosts the annual Seafood Festival alongside the Sandcastle Competition. You may recognize the towns of Hampton and Hampton Beach from earlier on while discussing the persecuted witch, Goody Cole. Odeorn Point Odeorn Point is located in Rye, New Hampshire, where Dan Brown, the author, resides. The oldest cemetery statewide is located within Odeorn Point State Park. Although this Oceanside State Park is well known, the inner parts of it aren't. Not everybody travels away from the Seaco Science Center and the drowned ancient forest, a.k.a. sunken forest, off Odeorn Point visible during low tide. Inside Odeorn Point State Park are ample trails where you'll pass through forest, old stone wall property boundaries, old carriage roads, the cemetery, secret fields of ghost pipe plants, old lobster and crab traps, left behind by olden day fishermen, and remnants of old forts and bunkers. There's plenty of viewing lookouts, picnic spots, and swimming holes in the ocean. Much of the swimming holes on this part of the coast are nurseries, where you'll find a variety of baby fish, hermit crabs, and other sea critters, as well as tide pools. First Navy Shipbuilding Yard the USA's first Navy shipbuilding yard was in Portsmouth in the early 1800s. Paul Revere's Seaside Ride Paul Revere is best known for riding through the streets of Boston to warn of the oncoming British. Before he rode through Boston, he had ridden his horse through the streets of Newcastle, now a modern-day rich town by Portsmouth, to warn of an attack on Fort William and Mary. America's Stonehenge and the Underground Railroad. 
America Stonehenge is located in the southern populated town of Salem, New Hampshire. It is an archaeological site famous for its sacrificial table, impressive stone, and links to astronomy. This site boasts a sundial of impeccable accuracy and historical sites where manacles of slaves from the Underground Railroad were discovered. Only 14 of the 50 U.S. states have direct history with this famous secret passageway for slaves to traverse, and New Hampshire is one of those states. Jonathan Patti was a farmer and abolitionist who lived on the site on what is also known as Mystery Hill. The White Mountains, Moose, and Native Americans. The Appalachian Trail. The 2,000-plus mile trail known as the AT runs through 14 states in the U.S., New Hampshire being one. The New Hampshire White Mountains, specifically the Presidential Range, where the famous and infamous Mount Washington stands over 6,000 feet tall, is known as the toughest part of the trail. This is mainly why most hikers choose to hike northbound, starting at the southern terminal in Georgia at Springer Mountain. This way they develop hiker legs by the time they reach the presidentials, and so they're nice and strong by the time they reach the northern terminus at Mount Katahdin in Baxter State Park in northern Maine. The AT can be recognized by trailheads listing the Appalachian Trails or trails with a distinct marker with the letters A and T. Hikers who hike portions of the AT are section hikers, and those that hike the entirety are through hikers. Trail magic are treats left behind by kind strangers for the hikers and are much appreciated once hiker hunger kicks in. The strangers who leave that trail magic are called trail angels, your lady Sadie being one of them. Moose. Only 19 of the 50 states have moose. The USA moose population is estimated to be at 300,000 or so, with Alaska having the biggest population. The moose in New Hampshire, about 3,000 strong, aren't common sightings, but areas with known sightings are in the Great North Woods. The Upper White Mountains, Route 16 toward 13 Mile Woods, and Umbagog Wildlife Refuge. Small pockets of the White Mountains like the Kangamangas from Bear Notch Road to Lincoln, Pinkham Notch and Dixville Notch, the Western White Mountains by the main border, and Northwest portions of the state like by Dorchester and stuff. Speaking of the aforementioned Kangamangas Highway, everybody in New Hampshire knows about this scenic byway. I wish more knew about the spots off the logging roads off of Bear Notch Road, headed toward Bartlett and Conway. Kangamangas Highway is better known as the Kank and is a 32-mile-long strip over a mountain with 9% inclines, with zero stores or gas stations, so gas up before you jump on the Kank. The word Kangamangas, FYI, is named after the Penacook chief, Kangamangas. His grandson was Passacon away. Stay tuned, we're getting to these guys in a minute. The Old Man of the Mountain Also known as the Great Stone Face or the Profile, this stone profile on the face of Cannon Mountain was a well-known state staple. It is located in the same area the hill abduction occurred, Franconia Notch. It was featured on the New Hampshire license plate and the stone face fell off in blocks starting at the chin on May 3rd, 2003. It was all over the news. New Hampshire natives were bumming and monuments were erected at the site to remember the old man New Hampshireites and tourists had grown to adore. Franconia Notch, you will recognize from earlier on in this video whilst discussing the Hill alien abduction. FYI, Franconia Notch rests on Interstate 93 and has a ton of viewing spots. Rest areas and recreational things to do for both families with kids and avid outdoorsmen. Native Americans Nationwide, there are numerous tribes of natives. In the Northeast, this fact remains true. In New Hampshire, there were two major tribes, with Algonquin being the main language, the Abenaki and the Western Penacooks. 
Personally, I lived in a town called Panacook, which is right on top of the capital of Concord, and I attended Merrimack Valley High School, our mascot being the Indian, but this was changed this decade due to politically correct SJWs who took offense for no reason. My basement was a dirt basement with a pile of boulders in the corner. The house was haunted. Ghost hunters, hit me up for an address to do your ghost hunting because 100% you will find a restless spirit there. SadieTheNight at gmail.com New Hampshire has a thick history and many rivers, lakes, mountains, towns, and other locales have been named with Indian words. For example, the Kangamangas Highway we discussed is one of those words. As discussed previously... Kankamangus was a grandfather of Passaconaway, who was known as being a wise, magical one. Passaconaway lived in modern-day Concord. Today, this location is called Sugar Ball Bluff, which barely anyone knows about. Even Google doesn't pull up a lot. Another famous Indian from New Hampshire was the lone Indian of the Magalaway in the Great Northwoods. He was said to jump on the back of a sleeping moose and went for a wild ride in the dense woods. He was wise, mystical, and named Metallic. His gravesite sits in the remote town of Stewartstown in a secret spot. Rockhounding an old growth forest. Franconia Notch State Park. Franconia Notch State Park is an old growth or first growth forest featuring ancient trees, mainly northern hardwood spruce. These are trees never lumbered or forested and the area resembles the habitat as seen before Europeans settled here. Some sections of this forest are very pristine and rarely traveled through. Sheldrick Forest Preserve, Wilton. This 227-acre forest preserve in the quaint town in southwest New Hampshire of Wilton features narrow trails through an ancient forest. Some trees reach upwards of over 200 feet. Snyder Brook Scenic Area, Randolph. This old-growth forest sits adjacent to a second-growth forest, so comparing the two is quite a trip. It is 36 acres with trails, a brook, and a waterfall. It also sits on a rail trail. Common huge trees found here are hemlock, spruce, white pine, and beech. Caroline Fox State Research and Demonstration Forest, Hillsboro. Also known as Fox Forest. With almost 1,500 acres to explore, there's also a farm on site, as well as the Henry Ives Baldwin Forestry Education Center. Mr. Baldwin is a researcher whose passion blessed the forest with exotic and native tree plantations. This is a heavily trafficked trail common for hikers, hunters, and cross-country skiers. Nancy Brook Research Natural Area Hearts Location This is the largest old-growth forest in the state, decorated with stately red spruce. Of all the old-growth forests in New Hampshire, and keep in mind this is not a comprehensive list but only a few, the trails in this forest are the toughest. It has rough spots and stream crossings to maneuver, so heads up. This forest is known to birdwatchers. Gems New Hampshire has a wide variety of gems and minerals, a handful of private and public digging sites, and plenty of mines to explore. Gem and minerals found here are quartz, beryl, fluorite, amethyst, albite, gold, garnet, topaz, tourmaline, aquamarine, and even white diamonds. There are many spots in New Hampshire for rock hounding and which we'll go through in a future video about cool and possibly unknown New Hampshire state gems and places to visit. Most of these gems are found within our granite and in pegmatite deposits. If you need a few right now to get you by until I make that video, you can dig at Moat Mountain in Conway. Barrel Mountain in South Ackworth, or Mount Uncanuic in Goffstown. 
You can even hop next door to Maine and try Deer Hill in Stowe. They have a kick-ass wildlife viewing blind at the Deer Hill Bog too that we'll be talking about in the cool places to visit in New Hampshire video. Of course, we'll be mentioning some of Maine and Vermont in it too. Maybe Massachusetts, but probably not. Or not so much. True Crime Disappearance of Maura Murray Maura Murray disappeared on February 9, 2004, after crashing her car on Route 112, Wild Amanusik Road in Haverhill, New Hampshire. Amanusik is a word from close by Amanusik River. Haverhill is a white mountain town close to the Kangamayas Highway in the towns of Lincoln, Bartlett, and Conway. To date, no word on Maura's whereabouts has been revealed. In late 2021, Human bone fragments were found on Loon Mountain in Lincoln, and the public speculated they could belong to Mora. As I knew they weren't, they were not her bones. The bones dated back from the 1700s to the mid-1940s, so there is no possibility they are Mora's. In order for Mora to get from Haverhill to Lincoln, she would have had to hitch a ride or gone over the Kangamangas Highway. The Allenstown Four, the Bear Brook Murders. The Allenstown Four are four female murder victims found in metal barrels strewn about on the forest floor in Bear Brook State Park in the south-central town of Allenstown. Two bodies were found in 1985 and the remaining two found in 2000. The only viable suspect was a serial killer, Terry Rasmussen, a.k.a. Bob Evans, who passed away in 2010. The Connecticut River Valley Serial Killer A serial killer was said to roam the waterways of the Connecticut River around Claremont, New Hampshire in the 1980s. The Connecticut River runs along the New Hampshire-Vermont border. To date, there are no suspects and the killer is still unidentified and possibly roaming free. He killed at least seven people. The Smutty Nose Axe Murders, also known as the Isle of Shoals Murder. On March 6, 1873, two Norwegian women were axed to death. A man by the name of Louis Wagner was accused of the bloody killings and sent to a prison in Alfred, Maine to carry out his sentence. Satan's Wrath Satan was said to visit many locales in New Hampshire, Purgatory Falls in Lindenboro, Wilton, and Mount Vernon being one of those places. You may recognize the town of Wilton from the Old Growth Sheldrick Forest mentioned in Section 6. Purgatory Falls is a trail system via Purgatory Brook Trail. Purgatory Falls, a waterfall, is known as the kitchen most used by Satan as per legend. He ruined a pot of beans thus the area becoming known as the Devil's Kitchen. Along the trails, one will also see remnants like old equipment and stone walls from the old dam that used to operate on site. This trail has lots of moss that cover stunning quartz and swamps, so it gets pretty slick here. Some parts of the trail are tougher than others with climbs over slippery boulders and roots. Thanks so much for tuning into this super long video about cool and possibly unknown facts about New Hampshire. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in checking out my upcoming video on cool and mainly unknown places to visit or for some INFJ stuff. Until next time, your lady Sadie signing off. All right, guys, hang in there for your maps. Uh, visit the night dot site slash blog to download them. Thanks.